Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 along with my cohorts Krieg and Margin 1 and Logan Nakari. If you enjoyed this video and any of our other content, sub to the channel, share with your friends, like. We're going to keep doing this as we usually do. This is a review for Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. <laughs> yep. Happens 10 years after Terminator 2 and follows John Connor and his future wife Catherine Brewster and the T101 running from the TX and ends with the end of the world. Pretty much straightforward to the point. <laughs> now, how are the numbers in this movie? So, uh, this movie's budget was $187.3 million, and they box office $433.4 uh, $3 million. Um, critics rate this film a 6.9, and the audience rates this film a 4.6. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Ouch. That's ratioed. A couple little facts and trivia about this film. So Arnold Schwarzenegger actually held out from being in this movie for a long time when they were trying to do that because he wanted James Cameron to be the director. Until finally James Cameron said, listen, just ask for a shit ton of money. So Arnold, <laughs> Arnold asked for a shit ton of money. In preparing for this role, Arnold Schwarzenegger was, uh, he was getting older. Um, early this because like early 50s he was kind of nervous about like the naked scene what the, all the terminators always pops in and the body builds for him uh so what he did is he had a regiment where he worked he worked out for like three hours a day for like a set amount of months um to prepare for that and he actually got he claimed to get to his exact same um measurements and muscle mass that he was at in T2 to try and get as close as possible to be an exact replica to look like just another robot that was the exact same guy from before. It's probably easier in 2003 than it was right now. Yeah. Yes. I don't think you could do that right now. Tiny little trivia things. Uh, the skulls that you see in the future um, that are in there are actually made of ping pong balls. Not adjusted for inflation. As of 2015, this was the most expensive rated R film of all time. And the cost of the Pentagon to create Skynet from the other defense company was $15 billion. So those are some random factoids for me. So usually we have a science time with uh, Josh or Jokester or Joker, however you know him. But since he is not here with us, we have a new segment. It is called Logan's Armory. The uh, guns featured in this, uh, the first gun you see is the Smith & Wesson 4506-1 and that's the one that the TX steals from the uh, police officer after she kills him off screen. Then there's a Glock 19 that Catherine Brewster used to shoot the Terminator in the face uh, in the uh, mortuary scene. Don't do that. Uh, Glock 36 that was used, that's the uh, subcompact 45 ACP that John Connor used to threaten himself at the RV scene, and inside Skynet, or not Skynet, but the uh, military base, uh, the TX uses a Beretta 92 FS, and thankfully they made it sound somewhat proper this time. I'm still salty about that in T2. Uh, there's a paint gun replica of a Walther PPK that was used in the uh, scene in the uh, animal clinic. The shotgun that Arnold uses in this one, because he uses a shotgun in every Terminator movie, apparently, is a Remington 870 Custom, and then there's a M26 MAS that is the gun that John Connor holds up in the uh, uh, Flash to the Future War. Police use an HK MP5A2. There is a H&K UMP45 that, is, that Arnold uses in conjunction with a uh, G36K, there's an HKM or AKMS uh, custom short barrel AK that Catherine uses to take down a, like the uh, HK prototype. There's an M4A1, an M16A2, an L85A1, and those are all guns that you kind of have to zoom in to see in the uh, F Flash to the Future scene that the Resistance fighters are holding. The machine gun used in the uh, Cemetery scene, I thought it was a uh, M249 saw for some reason, but it's actually a Browning M1919A4. And then there's a prop Gatling gun on the uh, T1s. A Sage Control SL6 rotary launcher. 
and the uh, uh, rocket propelled grenade that the uh, Terminator uses to shoot the TX in the Saber Terry scene is a Type 96 RPG, which means the Chinese. And yeah, that looks about about it. So not as many guns as Terminator 2. There's probably more in that coffin, but there's they're probably hard to count out. Well, in the in the uh, firearms database movie thing, they they actually have listed coffin arsenal. <laughs> Now we got to move on to the opinions. I haven't seen this film since, since middle school. I guess one of the big things that I kind of didn't like was some of the CGI kind of looked really iffy, like it was a huge downgrade when it compared to T2 or whatever. Like, it's, it, it, it just didn't look as good. It didn't look horrific, but you can spot it out like a kind of a bad like eyesore or whatever. And the movie the entire time felt like it had a straight-to-TV movie vibe for some reason. And I don't know if it's because I've seen this film on TV channels for so many times, but it's just... What? This is a movie played in theaters, and it feels like it was a straight-to-TV straight movie. What the fuck? I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, yeah, it but I put, it, I, I put it as a con. It's just like the way that it was paced, the way that it looked, the way that the filters were built and everything. Some of the CGI's looked like it was TV movie grade graphics and whatnot. Where? The, the only part that I would agree with you that, that I think the CGI might have looked bad is whenever his head was hanging off the back of his head and then he was putting it back together. Well, like, I'm not that saying... was the only part CGI for the entire movie that I felt wasn't fantastic quality for the time. Like, like I said, like, yeah. I mean, like, that's probably the only scene that looked, like, horrifically bad. Everything like, else looked low-grade. Like, 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 it wasn't horrible. It was bearable to watch. But for me, I could pick it out. Like, uh, Arnold showing up in the, the sphere. Um, some of the scenes of him getting bashed through the building from the crane like if you paid attention close enough you can see like his cgi body just dangling <laughs> like dangling like a dead body <laughs> quality wise this is the best graphics we've seen in terminator to this date better than one and two i would disagree with that but that's just me i would say in its time back in 2003 it looked pretty good yeah because i remember straight to tv movie yeah. effects back then and there was this like Wow, was this made in the 80s? What, yeah. What is this? I think for me, it's just like, I feel, I think what I'm trying to get to this is, I feel like this film didn't age as good as T2 did, because I, it, to me, T2 can still hold up to films that are excellent to this day, look-wise. Versus this film, it looked like it's about two, three years behind. Um, I felt like the TX was over-sexualized in this film. Um, number one, uh, go, go gadget, extendo boobies. Um, that scene actually took several times to, re to redo because every time they tried to inflate her boobs, um, a, a boob would fall off to the side under a bra. The, the way they did that practically. Yes. The, really? Yep. It was practical effect. It was going to be one of my things, but I decided not to put it in there because <laughs> it was a little, it was a little stupid. To go off like the movie and the storyline and whatnot, she could have been programmed like this, but just the way that she would talk, the way that she would kind of like tilt her head or kind of look at her target or her enemies, I kind of felt like she I had like, your gun. <laughs> like very like I'm very over sexual vibes. Like this is just, I know it's kind of like a a, a tactic, but. Six cells. I thought it was. I thought it was too much. <laughs> I, they didn't give a shit about the sound effects. Panther wars, dragon wars, <laughs> fucking Nazgul. <laughs> like, oh god, so so many gunfire shots. It sounded like it was ripped from a cartoon and everything. That serpentine belt squeal you get in uh, everything when the car is going bad. Um, <laughs> yeah. Big problem I have with probably one of the better scenes of this movie was the crane chase. There is no soundtrack in the first half of that crane chase scene. That bothered me a lot because you just heard crash, boom, bang, sirens, fire, explosion, boom. There's no soundtrack. You just, it just, you it, feel it's, the it's, realism of the it, scene. It, I think that's what they were going for, but for me, it didn't, it, it 
felt like I'm watching an episode of Cops. So would you like it better if there was no uh, background music soundtrack? I, okay, on the second half of the chase, there was a soundtrack. I'm just saying if they didn't have that in the, in the, the soundtrack in the second half, would you have liked that scene better? Uh, either have none in it at all or have it all the way through, I feel like, is, w- is what I'm, yeah, basically. So all or nothing. Mm-hmm, pretty much. I feel like Nick Stahl's performance wasn't, per- like, great. Like, I've seen better. But... Also, did you guys read up on why it could also not have been great? Because the guy from the second one was originally supposed to be uh, be in this film, and then, they, and then they took him out due, from what I read, d- d- due to substance abuse issues. Yeah. So they recast the role late, and, and he didn't have a bunch of time to get into the character. No prep time. Okay, yeah, that so. makes. Well, that and there's the rumor of playing John Connor as a cursed role. One liners weren't as great in this film. They felt they just felt like they were just like copied and pasted. Uh, worded talk- worded differently, but it's just like really talk to the talk to the hand. Fucking, um, um, I'm back. One liners. There is like at least six good one liners of this entire thing. See, he literally, okay. he said he said talk to the hand, and he put the hand up to his face, and he said he said his fucking line into the hand. I'll, I'll get into the T eight hundred or T one hundred and one or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, some good things. Uh, the future scenes looked actually pretty decent, and I if I remember correctly, the scenes where the Terminators are walking through in the very beginning that is the most used scene when it comes to people talking about this series and doing like an over review of it. That scene is used the most, and that's a scene I see all the time. That's why I prefer, like, I gravitate towards that. The T-800, T-850, I didn't know if I should put that as, as a pro or a con, which I'll get into a theory about this later. It seemed like it started, if show more emotion than uh, it did in the first two films, which that could involve with this reprogramming with, uh, uh, before he got sent to the um, past. The chase scene, I did complain about the sound, the sound, no soundtrack, but it was actually decent. Overprotective Grandpa. This is the first film where the T, T, whatever it is, starts acting like an overprotective grandpa. <laughs> I think my biggest problem with this film is the TX, because I didn't know if I could like it or I, ha- or I hated it. Because it has some cool elements. It can remote control vehicles. It had a multitude of arsenals and its arms and everything. It's a cross between a liquid... T-1000 and... Just call it a T-101. And the... It's a cross between the, the, the T-1000 and like a T-101 or whatever. But... It's over-sexualized. Um, it's fight scene with Arnold's Terminator in the building and through the bathroom and everything felt very underwhelming. It just felt like a giant shove game or just a giant game of that's my horse. <laughs> Um, and the TX is supposed to be incredibly smart, but it's very dumb for the TX to not realize that if you look at the monitors before you start chasing them down to the tunnel, it reads magnetism levels rising, and it didn't bother to even look at the screens. Yes, it's death set to a goal, but look down. Oh, find a different way to go get him. Okay. Theory, only one theory. Um, I feel like the Terminator is more, more emotional and overprotective, like a grandpa, and self-aware of what it wants or its actions, like getting the the the, um, the thing from the sunglasses from the, the the visor, picking its outfit, its mannerisms, kind of being jerky back and forth. It's just it's how um, uh, Catherine Brewster reprogrammed it in the in the future and whatnot. I guess because you got to think maybe. about who reprogrammed it the last time he came through. Yeah. John Connor. Yeah, it was John Connor. Who was a lot less emotional, more tactical than John yeah. Connor. Yeah, so this one was a bit more, more emotional and whatnot, which... Back then, I could see that's why an issue, but now it's like, okay, then it, it it's a learning computer. It yeah. It's kind of cool. The that second that he popped up in the movie, he was instantly learning. I guess, to kind of summarize everything else, just... For me, this film just felt like it was trying to recreate the success of the second one and it just became over the top on the corniness and whatnot that and i'm very 60 40 with the tx and everything it's i next (laughs) next i'm conflicted right now i grew up on this movie this was the very first terminator i ever watched then i watched the other terminators childhood favorite for mine uh, I disagree with about 80% of what Mike just said about how it was bad, how there's not one-liners when there was a ridiculous amount of one-liners. Some of them were not as good as others. Like, most of the female, the, both of the TX ones 
were not good one-liners. It, the the I like your gun kind of remind watching it now kind of re- reminded me of the, the, the great um, Godzilla film. That's a lot of fish. <laughs> it was on the same level for for me. Um, and the and the other bad parts for it was the sound effects that they put in that just didn't place. Like I've never heard a flamethrower that sounded like a goddamn dragon. Um, At least they didn't use a Wilhelm scream. Yeah, there's no Wilhelm scream. Thank but they God. didn't do a fucking panther scream after an explosion. <laughs> it was just like, who decided? I, I, I remember I was reading a fact earlier about how one one thing that Arnold did is whenever he came in, he chose some of the crew, like the hair, um, the makeup, some of the stuff for that. He was like, I, I want these specific people to do this. I really hope that one of those people was not his... his uh, you know the sound people there are some people from the crew that are actually like arnold's like employee the very first chick that got pulled over in the beginning uh that had the w- red jacket that the, the bitch told his suit off that was somebody who worked for um arnold's orchestrator that he would demand it to be an extra in the film so a lot of extras that were apparently females were a part of his team um <laughs> not hinting it it future controversies in his life those were my only negatives with the film everything else i loved it i think it's the best uh the best story for it i think it, it, it I, I think it has the best progression uh the last t2 t2 is a freaking classic and i love it um and i i do rank t t2 about or a little bit better than the than this one because this one does have some flaws um but like graphically it's way better there's there's spots if you look past like the nostalgia of T2, that this this movie does things much better. Yeah, but as a standalone, as a standalone movie, ignoring the other two movies, not trying to compare for which one's better or whatnot, this had gra- excellent graphics, ec- excellent sound effects. Um, I didn't think th- those other couple hiccups were the only thing that I really didn't like. I guess about you it. like Panthers and Dragons, sir. Those two, those two, or knock it down. Like, for me, T2, I rated it like a 10. Um, um, this one's getting knocked down a little bit. So I'm going to rate T2 higher than this one just because I don't remember those stupid-ass sound effects. So the the death of the, like, the Terminate, uh, um, between both the Terminators dying and everything, I felt, watching it again, I felt like that wasn't as great. Like, it was a little anticlimactic. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was going to say that too. Usually, the Terminate deaths in the series up to this point are super dramatic and emotional, and they're a big thing compared to the Terminator death in T2. This was like, oh wait, he's dead. It's over. Um, but then that was also led into the good uh, twist point. So one, one um, kind of thing that really stuck with me about, like, for this film was uh it was a really good example and the movies don't do this a whole lot where you can do everything right and you still fail i'll admit i haven't seen this movie in a long time and out of all the terminator movies this is one i've probably seen not the most because i've watched t2 like monthly but i've seen it more than the other ones not counting too because it's one that me and my dad watch a lot he loves it I actually forgot that uh, how many problems I had with this movie uh, going back to before I even saw it, back to when the marketing was out. Because the first thing I saw was Rise of the Machines. I'm like, oh, are we going to see how Judgment Day comes to fruition? That we did, but I was wanting to see more of a war, not just a setup movie. That's what this is to me. It is a setup movie. Now, if we actually, you know, say, you know, first 15 minutes, all hell goes loose, you see Judgment Day, time skip, you're in the war, that's what I wanted. I think that's what what everyone wanted, because that's like, that's bad marketing right there. Now, the ending, I do believe, is great, where they do fail. They're going to, like, we're going to stop this, but, you know, through whatever means, dubious, whatever, they survive because you know they were trying to stop it but you know they got put into a uh, president a presidential crowd uh, uh, fallout shelter that I think was meant for the Reagan administration based on the presidential seal that's a positive I can give it that you know that they actually did do the end of the world instead of like stopping it at you know zero hour I'm just confused about one thing 
when the uh, TX came to the future or came from the came to the past and uh, pulled out the cell phone and did like that internet thing with it, was that it just getting access to Wi-Fi, or did it implant the Skynet virus? I want to say that it, it's the one that implanted the virus because like it didn't real it, it started talking about a virus infecting all the internet and, and firewalls and whatnot like after she showed up and that's what really confused me when I was a kid because. In the first two films, it, it was like, oh, well, this is what's going to happen, yada, yada. The second one explained how Skynet was still getting made. This film didn't really explain, like, how Skynet came to be until, like, near the end and whatnot. It's like a defense system or whatever, and this virus is whatever. So that's why I kind of wrote down, like, here in the cons, which I wasn't sure if I wanted to put it as a negative or not, is this like, how, like, is it caused by the virus? Did the government make it just because reasons because there was no evidence of any terminators after t2 because everything was destroyed so i guess shits and giggles i don't know or destiny awaits for yada yada and whatnot so i think she uh is the one that started that virus or maybe it implanted a virus to hack net the, or the hack the skynet program that already existed yes i think so let's just go with that it was cool to see in theaters, but, you know, time and place, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the magic of the theaters kind of makes you think movies are either better or worse than they actually are whenever you yeah. see them. I kind I do agree with that, with both your thoughts on the whole message thing. Kind of like, you can't stop the inevitable if it's going to happen. Like, you can, like they said, you can slow it down, you can postpone it, but if it's supposed to happen, it's gonna happen. Shit fucking sucks. Everybody dies, everybody pays taxes. Yeah, so that's the big lesson take away from this film is accepting our accepting our fate. Um, that's depressing. <laughs> as as the direct line from Terminator whenever they, they were talking about how, how he had killed John Connor and he's like, oh no, and he's like, he, I die. That sucks. And he's like, yep, humans die. <laughs> that's literally the plot point for, for this. Is, yeah. um, now setting up for the next film. As if we haven't seen this and we don't know what's going to happen next. What would your guys' attitude towards the series be at this juncture? If I have not seen this film, if I have not seen this entire series at all and I went into this film dark, only seen the first three films going into the setup, um, I... I'd be excited. I'd be ex I would be excited for the f a fourth film because we'd be finally getting the war se like s sequence and, and whatnot. And is he going to be the John Connor, this the John Connor from the future? Or is time going to go, he, is he going to be acting differently and being a different John Connor? That I'm not 100% sure. It's just... Because this, it does, definitely doesn't seem like it's one of those things where it's, it's technically like a fluid timeline where there's set events that are definitely going to happen. It's just the way that they're going to happen might change. Like the original, what was the one from T T2 that they fucked up? That the Pentagon... That was the original Skynet, the company that... Cyberdyne? Cyberdyne. So whenever they destroyed that, that was originally what was going to happen. And then they said they delayed judgment. Day. They delayed the set events by doing that. So no matter what they do, even if they stop Skynet in this movie, it was going to happen another way. No, 10 Cause years. That, yeah, because that was a set event that was going to happen. Well, that would kind of make sense with something I noticed throughout the series where... Each time they're sent back, the technology gets better and better, more yeah. more high tech, you know, more upgrades, you know, more time goes on because you you think that you know machines are they really going to innovate or are they just going to find something that works and stick with it? Um, random trivia thing that I forgot to mention earlier that I didn't know if I mentioned. So at one point after he had rebooted, the Terminator had rebooted on his screen, they had a bunch of command listings, and I had it. I didn't write it down because it's a bunch of different command listings, but it was all stuff other than there was a mp3.com one, but other than that, everything was was words that pop up whenever you launch a Mac OS X. Um, Interesting. <laughs> so, they, so the Terminators run on Apple? <laughs> yeah, precisely. So they added um, that in there trying to... Trying to reference that Apple is is this kind of how I would feel after the end of this of watching it fresh. I can yeah. actually tell you how I thought watching walking out of the theaters. There you go. I was like, okay, that was cool. Do I got to wait another ten years to see Terminator Four? <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. Because they take a long time. I mean, there was a huge gap between between each movie. Rating as an individual movie, I put this movie at an eight point six. 
out of 10, which will probably be the highest of all of us. I put this at 8.6. This isn't for me. This is an extremely good film. I knocked off some points for some of the negatives I talked about. It's a four out of ten for me. I mean, it's. I mean, it has its action beats, but you know, if you want to watch a Terminator movie, watch the first one and the second one, and maybe go to Dark Fate at this point. But you only you got two gems in the series, and the rest is just okay. In my opinion, when it comes to the Terminator series, there is not a single horrific, like. Three or below out of ten in this series, in my opinion, like three or three or three to zero to me are films I would never want to watch again. This film is not horrific. It's just it's boring. It's for me. It's just like as a with you, like a couple things here and there, kind of maybe chuckle or whatever. But it's it's to me, it's just it's it just passed the time, and I would have to go with like maybe a five because. Five is usually the number I put up to where I don't know if I like it or hate it yet, but I know that I don't hate this movie, but I don't 100% like it. So for me, this film gets a 5 out of 10 individually. I kind of feel like, this is going to sound really fucked up, but I kind of feel like that T3 was directed more towards kids which is a really fucked up it's thing rated to r say. it's a really fucked that's, up thing that's a stupid thing to say it mind. is a stupid thing to say it's but rated r it feels, kids literally can't watch the film it feels watered down to hell okay it's it's a movie that adults can take their kids to to go watch because you can be you can be a kid and go to an r movie with a with an adult but i don't i think the only reason this is rated r is because they dropped the f bomb too many times because there wasn't that many on-screen deaths. And side all, boobage. It's missing something, and it's it doesn't click all the way. Like I said, I I I told you all before. I don't hate any of the Terminator films. This is just one of the weak. This is like one of the weaker ones, in my opinion. Would I recommend this to viewers? Um, if you want to kill time for two hours, go for it. If you hate it, I apologize. I wouldn't say. If you find it at a, at a movie a movie store for like five bucks, I say it's worth only five bucks. If you're paying twenty bucks for it, don't. I pay sixty dollars oh. to watch it. No, <laughs> I would not go above five bucks to pay for this movie. Either buying it used or street or like stream it. Oh yeah, we watched my DVD copy of this. You guys want to take a guess at what I paid for it? Seven ninety nine. Five. I got it for ninety nine cents at Vintage Stock. Oh. <laughs> Um, this movie was almost as good as the greatest Jurassic Park of all time, Jurassic Park 3. We are not to that point yet. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. We are not at that, that point yet. That review will not come out till June. Ladies and gentlemen, the living contrarian. I know. He has, he has a weird thing when it comes to, th like, the third movie in the series where it's, like, complete garbage, but he thinks it's, like, the greatest... Hey, like, we like, just disagree. You like what you like, you know. I mean, that is your opinion, and you're entitled to it. But you know, I disagree. It, it, it's, both... it's, it's like say if me and him saw the Fountain of Youth, and he's like, "Oh my God, I can be young forever." And I look at it and go, "That's piss." It's a... <laughs> the next time you shall see us uh, with this Terminator series, we no. will be covering Terminator Salvation, but we'll also be covering other series as well as Spider Man Two and. We are going to be starting our new uh, movie series, or career series, I should say, with the actor Jim Carrey. We're going to cover every single Jim Carrey movie that he's ever been in, starting from his very first one, made in 1983, remember right? The Sex and Violence Family Hour. And that's going to be interesting, because I've never heard of that movie in my entire life. Me neither. I looked it up, and it looks really low quality, but... That's what you get for his very first movie. <laughs> and also, we have mentioned Jurassic Park throughout these recent reviews and everything. We are currently recording those right now, but they will not be released until the week of Jurassic World Dominion comes out, so keep an eye out for those. Are we, are, for the Jim Carrey thing, are you going to do Batman Forever? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Every single one of his movies. There we go. So that is our thoughts on... Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines, a.k.a. His Fountain of Youth, a.k.a. The, the, the Piss Pond. <laughs> this is Mike Check 95, along with my cohorts. This movie is goaded, Krieger. Uh, 
Logan McCurry here. I gotta go to bed. <laughs> we are signing out, and hopefully the war will start in the next movie. I want you off the fucking set, you prick! Are you professional or not? Oh, good for you! You understand my mind is not in the scene if you're doing that. I'm gonna go, you want me to go fucking trash your lights? You want me to fucking trash them? Then why are you trashing my scene? Stay off the fucking set, man. For fuck's sake.